Digital Foundry is back with another episode of our 2007 time machine. This time going back and looking at Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Seminal game from Infinity War that pretty much changed the game industry for a long time. And to talk about this, I'm joined by my friend and colleague, John Linneman. How are you doing there, John? I'm doing pretty good, Alex. I am ready to talk about some Shoot Bang Man 4. <laughs> Bloody screen. So, so real. real. Here I'm playing at 1920 by 12, uh, 1920 by 1080, 60 hertz, uh, anti-aliasing off. This game supports MSA. Alex, I want to stop you for a second. You said you were about to say 1920 by 1200. 100. And that's interesting because this, right around 2007, is when PCs were kind of transitioning from 16 by 10. Like, it would have been 4 by 3, and then PC monitors kind of went 16 by 10 for a short period. And then everybody just kind of adapted 16 by 9. Yeah. So 1920 by 1200 would have been common for a while. It would have been a also a really awesome monitor for that period yeah. in terms of, it was probably like 24 inches, 1920 yeah. by 1200, really nice pixel density. The only problem was it was probably an LCD during that time yep. when it wasn't that great. Uh, here we are doing the training mission. Oh, uh, they, they I'm, start you with the training. I forgot about this. Yeah. Um, currently, even though it says I had VSync off in the menu, V-Sync is on in game. I'm not you know, sure what that's about. I think that's, that's okay, just for the presentation yeah, purposes. Right. And also, presentation purposes. we'll see if it dips below 60. Because 60 uh, is the key. The uh, one thing that oh. we're going to... I think I need to put, pick up my pistol, don't I? No. no I guess I don't. But uh, I have to go to the range, the shooting range. Oh, it's getting a little dippy-dippy there. Uh, but GPU usage is pretty high here, 80, 88%. Uh, the, now, this was an... You know, we'll talk about a lot of stuff here, but... To put it into perspective on the technical front, I mean, Call of Duty 4 here is the game where, one, uh, the Call of Duty series came up to speed on PlayStation 4 after yeah. Call of Duty 3, which was actually from Treyarch. Uh, so that this is a crazy situation. Think about this. We're, we're on the cusp of a new console generation, right? Well, bef the year before this game launched, Call of Duty 3 comes out. On Xbox 360, it's 60 FPS. On PlayStation yeah. 3, it's 30. Yeah, that's brutal. Now, that's that's kind of insane. Like that, if that were to happen today, that would have a huge impact. And so this was kind of the return. Everything was 60 FPS. Well, at least the main version. It's not that weird Wii conversion. Oh yeah. Uh, but you know, this this was an impressive looking game at the time. <laughs> I like how he's yelling at me for not aiming down the sights. I just kept shooting. Um, oh, that just reminded me. Like move. this game is like. It's very scripted, as we'll talk about, but the way that the, 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 the guys here in the training range talk to you, or kind of the way they talk to you throughout the game, is very, like, FMV-like. Like, if you go back to the old FMV games from the early 90s, it's That's always, like, point. these guys, like, talking at the camera, like, you're a piece of trash! You're the worst <laughs> ever! Like, they're just, like, throwing What are you doing? You. you died! I can't believe you died! Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, this, this time you just get, like, those extreme <laughs> quotes from, like, Plato that war is hell or whatever. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> Uh, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to go back here or something like that, pick up my pistol. Um, but, you know, this engine is kind of really interesting. I mean, you were talking about it, 1024 by, I think, 600 on the consoles here with two times MSAA. Uh, so it was had some okay image quality for the time, um, I guess. Well, especially if you played out. it on uh, one of those strange HD CRTs. Yes. Uh, which I actually had one of those, one of the Sony's, because those, you know... Are you ready for some physics, by the way? Oh, yeah, let's see. Um, was that physics? Oh, no, it was just, it's just like... <laughs> okay, just that, like... that was awful. Not only did it, the watermelon <laughs> broke in a scripted way, whatever, that's fine, but then you try to shoot that slice, and then yeah. it goes through the watermelon and makes a bullet mark in the table underneath yeah, the you watermelon know slice. I'm going to flip right here to a shot of me blowing up a watermelon in Crisis just to show uh, the what? difference. That game Crisis, came out in the Crisis same year. was way more high-ended than this. Let's just talk Half-Life yeah. 2 here. Yeah, <laughs> that's a really good point. Half, I'm going to flip uh, Half-Life 2 watermelon right here. Um, if there is such but a yeah, thing. So, but yeah. <laughs> oh, there is. Gary's mod totally oh, has yeah. watermelons. Um, but uh, so, like, the one cool thing about this engine was that in comparison to Call of Duty 2 and I would even say 3, um, it switched over to uh, shadow maps from like most of the light sources in the game, which yep. is, I would say, pretty rare for the time when everyone was still baking a lot of uh, lighting. Well, so uh, but shadow maps these, uh... were becoming more common at this point, but yeah, yeah, this yeah. was a 60 FPS game with shadow, with maps, shadow maps, which was kind yeah, yeah. of a big deal. 
But uh, I think I'm just gonna skip this rest of the mission because uh, do I really want to go through the shooting course? I don't think yeah. Can. Oh, but by the way, the performance here going down outside as we kind of see all this vegetation on the screen and all these other things, 40, 51 FPS, uh, still not tearing even though I have VSync turned off. Uh, but you know, I don't know why VSync won't work. Who knows why? But this is not very good performance actually right here. Um, so, but if you think about it, this is running at I don't know more than double the resolution yeah. that is found on consoles uh, so that's still pretty great uh, and obviously with things like higher resolution shadows it's possible to tweak this game i'd imagine to run at a locked 60 on the pc at this time uh, while still getting a slightly higher resolution than consoles oh 100 well, like i mean i don't want to do it right now until we get into the game uh, but one thing that i really want to talk about uh, that i think is really cool is they fake motion blur on the shell casings. I don't know if you can see that, John. Yeah. Uh, but it looks pretty cool. Uh, it's one of the first games where I remember seeing that. It's the only uh, object where they have it on it. Like It's just kind of like reprojecting it like four or five times in a row so it looks like motion blur. But darn, does that look good. It does It does um, actually look really good. I like that a lot. <laughs> yeah, there's like, you know, like they have cool post-processing where when you get close to an object while going down iron sights, it brings up like depth of that field. That was introduced in uh, Call of Duty 3 as well. Yeah, Treyarch. and like if you like, should if I should zoom on it, zoom in on an object, it should bring up. Uh, it's not doing it right now. Uh, the depth of field on something, but you know what? This mission's boring. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> can you? Okay. Yeah, I've, I've oh, you've played a bit ahead it. of time, okay, good. so I can I mission say, select. That, that's always the thing. Let's go to Crew Expendable, the kind of famous mission with Captain Price going in and with the helicopter. Oh yeah, and they uh, would always do these the uh, video interludes. Which were interesting. It was a good way to mask loading, on, especially on the consoles there. Yeah, and then here, you're just suddenly in-game. Uh, 40, 54 FPS, but, you know, like, this is an area where there's a ton of bandwidth sapping effects uh, on screen. I assume the rain the... particles are just, like, a localized yeah. volume around the helicopter. Yeah, yeah, that's that's <laughs> what I'm... Yeah, that's actually what it looks like uh, when you think about it, because yeah. it doesn't seem to be going... It does look like that. ...in, in front of it. Uh, but I think the one thing that I remember liking on this level, especially, was, like, the ships moving back and forth, so you can see the shadow maps moving along the front of the ship. Do I have to hit F here? No. Um, but so, the thing about this level, though, that always struck me, and it is a beautiful level, no doubt. Oh, that frame rate. But, the, but the actual uh, the rain effect doesn't actually look as good as Metal Gear Solid 2. No, it doesn't actually. Which Let's was a much a older game, it. of course. Like it just doesn't have that same quality, and it also doesn't have the like MGS2 even had like geometric like raindrops that would form on the camera and like run depending on where you were looking. So if, you know, yeah. you look up, you get that on your visor, and like, and look at that. That's awful. Like, yeah, that doesn't look good. You can actually see the overlapping uh, sheets yep, of, yep. and it, they turn also with the camera. So I said this for mm. years, but like it took. It took like a decade for other games to match Metal Gear Solid 2's rain effect. <laughs> That's a nice looking texture though on the rope that, model. That actually uh, is. Obviously uh, overly specular probably. Yeah, uh, the but it's wet. It's wet. It's wet. Oh, the moving shadow from the ship as well. Yeah, yeah. There's this thing right here. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, performance is a bit wonky right now, but just because we're outside in the rain. Obviously I could probably turn it down to like 1600 by 900, but let's just enjoy the presentation for now. My favorite thing here though is that you're playing the game so wrong in that like stopping to look at stuff but the game like pauses like everything just waits so you yeah. are you are the key the linchpin to everything in this game world and that you're, is you're gonna see this later in the mission pretty hardcore when a lot of things just don't happen unless you move forward um uh, the performances so, so i want to talk really about that rough. a little bit that was very in vogue at this time uh mm -hmm. and i still say half-life is kind of responsible for this approach but it really got uh, it really ramped up during the first half or like even the, the decade, like from 2000 to 2010, like scripted, extremely scripted sequences were, were the, the, the big thing that you did. Uh, and this team itself, actually, I think a lot of these guys started out on uh, Medal of Honor Allied Assault on the PC. And that same studio had done the Sin Mission Pack, Wages of Sin, before that, which was really yeah. good. Yeah. But, but Call of Duty Allied Assault was the one that really went cinematic. And that is exactly the model which uh, all of these Call of Duty games would follow for quite some time. And this the, is a bit awkward. Yeah. And again, it's, you know, none of that stuff. Well, look at that. It actually moved. 
I think some of it moves, uh, but a, a lot of it doesn't. And that's the it's thing. This, this game is designed to be... You're, it's very cinematic. It's very focused on you follow the action. You're kind of involved in the movie. Uh, it's not about these, like, interactions here. Like, yeah, I know. It, like, so they're, like, kind of, like, tangential to what you're actually supposed to be doing exactly. at this moment. Like, at the best, you would be shooting guys, and you would notice that it moves yeah. a little bit. So, like, More importantly, uh, though, again, this, this is a game that was designed for 60 frames per second on consoles. So those are exactly the types of details you would not want to waste CPU time on. <laughs> no. Like, you Especially really at need that to hit time that frame rate. It, it wouldn't have they were sense. still trying to, like, uh, get to grips with, I would say, multi-core design yeah, in video exactly. games. Uh, this, once again, better than Crisis, seems to be more multi-threaded than Crisis, uh, because that Crisis is just so special. But, you know, like, they had to save CPU time on the something. The way you said that, it sounds like my precious Crisis. My precious, it's still better than my precious Crisis. Uh, you can see, oh, like, no. the kind of static cube map. Yeah, very uh, static. And, yeah, obviously, this is before box projected yep. cube maps and things like that. Looks like a generic sky cube map with, like, what is that yeah. tall, like, glossy looking? I don't know looking, what it is. Like, it's just, like... That's bad. I, I don't know about that. Yeah, it just like follows the camera. It's a little awkward looking. I don't even know if it's a like a full-on. See, cube that's map, another thing where honest. Metal Gear Solid Two excels over this, and they used a very old-school method where uh, they literally just drew a simplified version of the main scene underneath the the deck. Yep. And, and then had like transparencies on those yeah. areas where it should look exactly. like uh, puddles, which is excellent. And I love when you talked about in, that in your yeah. MGS2 video. And they even me they mirrored the character models too. So everything had proper reflections. It was totally like a, an old school way of doing it, but it was super effective. Oh, performance whenever you, you get a bunch of uh, get particle spray in my to, face. To be, to be fair though, on the reflection stuff, like trying to do that type of reflection when you're doing a lot of more complex shader work and shading and stuff. Oh yeah, like, it, it doesn't hold up so as well. It's so expensive. If you were to try to do that, like mirror the whole scene and do all the shading twice, like, you're just like, <laughs> your budget increases yeah. so much. <laughs> so like, like this is cool. Oh, whoa, whoa. 36 FPS. Wow. But uh, like, I just kind of like how there's, flashing lights here it, it is a cool looking area i don't think it is nearly as cool as the, the tanker in mgs2 but you know like it's really cool so that they managed to make something like this in 2007 60 fps target Wa on console watching it's you bumble really... through this though is pretty funny because it doesn't <laughs> yeah, it really kind of destroys I'm, it's, it, I'm not playing it like the ultra fast way, like uh, where you're supposed to see like all these cool animations playing out. They're going to breach the door here. And these are good. These animations in game, they, they look very, yeah. very good. Like, Great motion capture stuff. Um, you can see like here if I like zoom around, like that cool depth of field on yeah. the guy to my left and right. Really cool stuff. And then shooting, you see the fake motion blur. It, it gives off the appearance of all this nice post processing stuff that like, you know, Call of Duty 2 before this had some post-processing, but nearly not as much as this game. Um, also, like, this is kind of cool. You can see the, like, almost stencil quality shadows yeah. because of how re high res they are. Um, kind of Doom 3 looking environment here. It, do it does look great. Uh, this is also an area where I noticed there's, like, some ex extreme volatility in the frame rate because if you walk into any of the particle streams as I go closer, oh, yeah. Uber uh, draw. It, it just like absolutely wrecks the performance. Let's do this right here. Bandwidth. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is, that is just intense. Uh, and then it just stops because um, the scene has to go on. Obviously. See, that, that's actually, um, that was one of the things I liked about Halo 5 that was very clever is they would uh, sort of like pair back the alpha effects as you get close to them. Yeah. Dynamically. So like, you know, uh, you could never really stick your face up into the smoke, and that would ensure that the frame rate would remain steady. Oh. In comparison to this, this is kind of like the time before a lot of dynamic resolution and more dynamic features were brought into game rendering engines. Where and, and it's the time before post-process AA. Yeah, I know, right? So, like, two times MSAA. This game would probably run quite a bit better without it, both even on the Xbox 360. Ooh, this is cool. They fake the, uh, the lighting of the uh, particles... Oh by kind of actually just authoring the particles to look that way. See, this, um, there, this I really, that's I cool. find this kind of artistry fascinating because, you know, as as we get, you know, start to produce more advanced rendering technologies and stuff like ray tracing comes out, you know, uh, a lot of these things are handled kind of like inherently and the artist works within those, within the realism. But here it's like, it's all about faking that. And so there's a yeah. lot of very careful hand placement of effects 
uh, tweaked to look like something that's far more complex than it actually is. And I really think that <laughs> that that is an art that I can appreciate. Oh, I can totally appreciate it. And uh, but it also makes me feel for the people who worked on this game oh, yeah. because obviously. You would have to think like, okay, how do I make it look like that? I'd have to make the bespoke object, and then I'd have to place it in the level, and then suddenly the game design changes, and I have to remake it again. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, like if it doesn't update in real time, so like it just would have been. It, it looks cool, but it just meant a lot of. Are those bad guys? I honestly cannot tell. Oh, uh, well, I don't know. The thing is, no, though, is that was always friends. the Crytek mantra back in the day. Even going with like Far Cry, it was. Cry Engine was designed to be kind of real time all the time. All the time. And, yeah. You know, its main thing was okay, you can design within the Cry Engine editor uh, and make changes to everything in real time. Uh, and that was really like forward looking at the time. But obviously, you know, that has carried onward. <laughs> it carried onward. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, gosh. See, like, like, I think. As much as this game was influential afterwards due to it selling so incredibly well, um, I'm going through this right now in the year 2020, quite a while after, more than 13 years after its launch almost. Uh, and it is just, I mean, this is not my style of game. Well, okay, let, kind of the campaign was uh, impressive for the day, but it was actually yeah. the multiplayer that was the influential part. The thing that... And that mainly comes down to implementing cool. all of the various, you know... Uh, leveling up systems and the unlockable weapons and that yeah, really I mean, hadn't been done like that before where it was you know you played and you earned things so even if you lost you were still earning and I'm not actually a huge fan of that design myself per se but it's extremely influential and it's like it changed the industry forever so these guys running around this is nuts <laughs> kind of great actually uh, I never really liked the the Fighting AI in, in these games, I didn't ever thought was that fun because, you know, they try to make it a little more realistic so they're not, uh, you're not really meant to get up close like you were doing. Yeah, no, yeah, like it's a little bit awkward. And if you were playing on a more difficult setting, that would equal death. Yeah, like in this game, I'm not playing on the highest setting because I want to talk to, yeah. you know, John about uh, the obviously. engine and the gameplay and things like that. Uh, if you play this game on the highest settings, it's like tons of grenades being thrown at you. You have to be very careful behind cover to make sure you just like pop up really quickly, get shot off, and then go back behind cover because you'll be zoned in on really quickly. Uh, this is interesting. I'm pretty sure there should be like a... I have to pick up something here. Oh, look at that. That's a cell phone. All the shadows on there. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, they put a light right there and it just has these extremely crisp shadows from the from the bullets and everything here. That's kind of awesome. Oh, there you go. Uh, the, manifest. the Manifest. A little bit awkward texturing uh, there, but you know what? Yeah, you still know. pretty good looking. Does this move? It's got a cube no. map on it. It's got a, it's got a cube <laughs> map on it though, but that's pretty cool. Um, I have to go upstairs. Uh, Bravo squad, where'd you go? I honestly don't know where my troops are. Oh, it tells me on the map. Um, you know, like kind of ushering at a, a I'm just thinking of when I think about like a boarding level in a game, I'm always brought back to like, uh, what is it? The two betrayals or not the two betrayals, uh, truth and reconciliation from oh, Halo. Oh yeah. Yeah. Where you go aboard the alien, uh, the covenant cruiser and, uh, has a very different feel than this level because it's less cinematically driven. It's more like you just going from room to room, clearing it. Uh, yeah, ha Halo is much Marines. more focused on gameplay as opposed to uh, cinematic. Yeah, yeah. Sequences. That was a pretty cool thing though, like regarding uh, him getting up in my face. That's ballsy considering the quality of the character model. Oh, they looked all right. Yeah, it looked all right. Pretty sure I'm gonna also see my frame rate tanking right. Yeah. Watch, um, I keep hitting C by accident uh, for some reason. Uh, this, um, I guess it's tense. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> it's a very different style of design than, like, it's it's something you would see in games after this quite a lot, where you're just, like, wa running through the end of a level while, you know, you don't have that much control over what's happening. You're just trying to feel, taking in the moment almost, uh, so you're not engaging in any real gameplay. Now, this is the last time I went through here. Uh, I accidentally went left because I didn't see where they went, and then the game failed me, yep, by the way. Yep, that's, that, that's uh, right. <laughs> uh, so you can't do that. You have to kind of follow see, them this, right this to the This reminds me. This is one thing. Oh, see, oh, like, like see, this. Yeah, what you did, did you think I went the wrong way there? Uh, maybe. 
I didn't think oh, yeah, I did. Yep. Oh, I have to go around. See, like, yeah, like, yeah. See, this is what I liked about uh, <sighs> Naughty Dog's games, starting with, like, Uncharted 2, was where they would have these kind of, like, set-piece, like, moments, but the gameplay systems would remain active. So you might have a normal battle on a ship that's sinking or something. You know what I mean? So yeah, you have right? everything happening around you, but you're not just following necessarily a scripted path. You're engaged that's with the gameplay systems. That's a big difference to talk about. Like, the, the scripted thing is happening on the, like, the level of precipice that you're engaging in versus it deciding the entirety of the gameplay. Like, there it was just me running forward. Yeah. Uh, and I apparently went the wrong way, even though I thought I went the right way originally. I don't know. It's, it's not my style of design. But, but again, I mean, you know... This is 2007. I, I, I don't want to be harsh on it for that at this point because things were very different at that time and games were often still, you know, they were still figuring out the cinematic approach. Uh, and, you know... Ooh, Bloom. Oh, yeah, and then we have this whole... Uh, again, it's very yeah. cinematic. We get this, first, this first person sequence, which was actually pretty cool at the time. Yeah, it was definitely really cool at the time. It, it like... You didn't see a lot of intense first-person animations in games in general because first-person shooters uh, kind of concentrated more on like the kind of fast-paced gameplay. This one was like smaller, tactical, and more cinematically driven. And you have all these cool things like usually you can see your hands in the in the cutscenes. You can't see your body, unfortunately. I think that was brought into the series uh, in later games. Um, but you know, I think we can kind of skip over this <laughs> uh, if we can. What is it? Hit escape and then. There is no... You don't skip a scene oh. in Call of Duty. Oh, Jesus. Um, it's okay. Just let it go. Well, you know, look at yeah, this. You got go. all those shadows. You have Nico from GTA 4 there on the right. <laughs> yeah, Nico and his cousin, Roman. Uh. <laughs> and this was before GTA 4 shipped, I guess, which is interesting to consider, you know. Yeah, I know, right? I'm actually really curious how they're doing the kind of indirect lighting here. I mean, it's pretty... Uh, singular tone, but occasionally you see an object that looks like it has like a rim light on it, almost. Yeah. I'm curious how they're doing it. I'll have to maybe read up on it afterwards if they ever put it out in documentation. I wonder if they just like form. place like little manual like lights in like, specific spots. Yeah. Th this is forward rendered game. Yeah. Uh, so like, they're not going to be going crazy with a ton of light sources Ooh. in general because it's way too expensive. Uh, so I'd imagine there's like here on like the side of this guy's head, it's got like a yellow glow occasionally. I'm not sure how they're doing it, uh, but it looks interesting, I guess. Like you should see it maybe a bit. Uh, look at all this is, that's happening right here. Uh, this take place in a in a country. <laughs> I don't know which one. Uh, probably some made up Call of Duty country. Call of Duty country. I love it. <laughs> uh, these guys just wow. But yeah, the lineage of this engine is also cool, coming from essentially what is id Tech 3 in Call of Duty 1, where it was really apparent if you look at that game's menu and like almost everything about it. Even this game has some sort of leftovers from id Tech 3 in it, but the fact that on PC, multiplayer is a different EXE than the single player game, you know, which is something that you'd see in a lot of id Tech That's 3 right. titles. Um, I mean, it's a continuation from Allied Assault as well. I mean, yeah, Call right? of Duty was That's a, a direct point. descendant of that game. Pretty okay looking. Uh, but then it, once again, obviously there's a lot that I'm just not doing right now, just taking it in. This kind of reminds me of the beginning of Far Cry 2, if you remember that, actually. Yeah. You're also in a car going forward while a bunch of stuff is happening around you showing like war-torn country. Oh, and that's like right away too. Yeah, right? Yeah, that, that's the immediate start of Far Cry 2. As as somebody tweaking like tweaking PC settings to play Far Cry 2, that was like normally I would load the game and then start tweaking, but in that game it was very annoying because it's like oh okay well you actually have to sit through this very long car ride before you can get to the thing where you can save and you know, you know what, I'm gonna turn down I'm gonna see if I can turn down the resolution uh, because I want to see if I can get this more at a po good 60 FPS because yeah. it's it's dipping way too often. It's dipping. Here. Hey, um, which res nope. are you going with? This is interesting. Is it's this a right-click, right-click? Click, right click. Click. Yep. <laughs> Let's do a 1600 by 900, uh, which is still, obviously, for the time, a pretty high resolution. It's Xbox Let's One grade. It doesn't. Let's, uh, yeah, it's Xbox One grade. Let's hope it doesn't crash. It crashed. Okay. 
Oh, wait, did it? No. Okay, good. It just brought me to the menu really quickly. <laughs> oh, God, that reload. was bad. But is it restarting the level? No. It always does this. That is the okay. loading. Okay, good. I hope... Oh. No, it didn't. It's fine. Okay, good. Okay, good, 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 good. I got a little nervous there. Um, oh, I like this depth of field here. Yeah, it's kind of actually pretty cool looking. It looks a little awkward occasionally when it mixes with the... Uh, oh, they're doing that accumulation oh, blur yep. right here. Um, it looks a little awkward occasionally when it mixes with the bloom because the bloom is lower res than the output resolution. So it like fizzles a bit. But, ooh, I like this guy's face. Uh, and they get that sweet T-buffer action. <laughs> yeah, sweet T-buffer <laughs> action here. Uh, ground texture looks pretty great. Oh, that's oh. not right, but uh, yeah. I just think you're not supposed to look left or right there as much, even though you can. But this is obviously everyone's horror scenario. I'm going to get shot in the face right here. Um, so this this guy in the red hat, I think he actually escaped from the original Far Cry. And he's <laughs> yes. finally getting to do what he wanted to do the entire game. I'm going to shoot, shoot you in you the in face. face. <laughs> How'd you like those apples? See that indirect lighting on the, uh, the, the Desert Eagle there? Very I also cool. like the, the shininess on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. So now this is the, uh, I'm pretty sure the level outside, uh, uh, kind of at nighttime when you have like a silenced weapon. Oh yeah, that's right. Yep. Ooh, that performance though. Ooh, I'm really GPU limited there's here. There's water here. What is it? It's like, there's a bunch of transparency effects. I think oh, the 88, yeah. we'll see this in later games and I kind of noticed it in Gears of War and in Crisis. The 8800 series, amazing shading power, but still for the time at higher resolutions, you're bandwidth bound, it yep. feels like. And like 48, 45 FPS. Um, you know what, let's go to kind of more Xbox style uh, uh, kind of uh, graphical settings here. 720p. We'll, we'll turn it down, 720p. Uh, still higher res than Xbox, but no, let's see what it how it runs there at least. Yeah, comparable to Xbox One launch games. <laughs> <laughs> Xbox One is our how many Xbox Ones is this duct, duct tape together, John? That's my question. Exactly. Let's hope it didn't crash. Is it uh, loading in game here? Uh, I'm not 720p yet, am I? Okay, we're back. You can try again. Yeah. I love how number of corpses is a setting. Yeah, <laughs> number, number of, of corpses. corpses. Large. <laughs> yeah, wait. Look at that. Number. Where is it? At the here? bottom. Number of corpses. Large. <laughs> 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 I'm a big fan of that setting. I mean, you know, it's really disappointing in a game when you know shoot something and the body disappears. It's one of my least favorite parts about Doom Three, even though it's oh. cool for the time. Uh, I kind of want to see like the enemy bodies lying on the ground. And well, see what I did. I think with Doom 3, it's pretty obvious that that was a direct issue with the, the dynamic lighting that they were lighting. Doing, yep. they, they it just couldn't way support. Expensive. Yeah, exactly. It would have been very expensive. Okay, so now let's get this going again. Tw 720p, no MSAA at the moment. Uh oh man. I what? I don't. You're poor. PC. I don't know if this is my 8800 GT or if, let's uh, I mean, look the at GPU the settings is again. 89%. Right 89%. I'm, I'm curious if this, that's not full GPU utilization, obviously. I'm curious if this is, in fact, just the 2.4 gigahertz of this Q6600 not doing so well. I guess we could look at, let's turn off softened smoke edges to get rid of the Z feathered particles. And is there anything else here that would really help? I just, I just love saying Z feathered Z particles. Feather particles. <laughs> Let's uh, there's not a lot here. Um, 720p, still not. Let's hope it oh, does load up the game. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> this game is not very friendly about us changing the graphical system. other than resolution. <laughs> this runs a lot worse than I expected, to be honest. <laughs> it's slightly baffling as a game designed to run at 60 FPS on those consoles. So don't turn off, don't change the graphics while I'm in rendering the game. I think that's the the, the, the important thing to remember. That's kind of a pet peeve of mine though, when it comes to tweaking. Yeah, I know, right? So 720p, no Z feathered particles, uh, which means they will have like hard intersections with geometry on terrain. It's all those alpha, well, 
It would seem like that would be the issue because it's for you know they threw that all around the, ba- the bottom there, which was expensive for the time, obviously. Okay, okay. that's oh. better. See yeah. that? Here you, oh yeah, uh, yeah, it's better. It's much better. Way better. Uh, still not hundred uh, percent, but 720p here. This is interesting. I mean, obviously, this is higher resolution than the Xbox uh, 360 and PS3 game. So the GPU usage is the same. So I think it really was just a bandwidth thing. Yeah, I think so. But even then, 51, 41, I guess we could mess with the the shadow resolution to also try and bring this up. Uh, But this is some pretty big differences in performance between levels, by the way. If you think about it, like uh, 1920 by uh, 1080, then 1600 by 900. And this one, due to the art being completely different, Required almost like 1280 by 720 and some graphics tweaks downwards. Oh, they just threw a flashbang. This guy's very confused. Um, Ooh, the lack of Z feathering on there. <laughs> yeah, the you can definitely see it when the, the particles interact with <laughs> anything. Less pretty, uh, but still, you cheap. know, cheap. Let's press and hold F to secure the energy intelligence. Okay, you got it. Uh, vault over things. I always like that actually quite a lot. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of first person animations when you actually interact with objects and that is pretty awesome looking. Um, look, do you look down at the ground there. Do you see how uh, they have the specular on like oh, it's supposed to be dirt or grass and you oh, see yeah. the specular from the moon on there. I mean I guess you could argue that it's supposed to be wet but that just looks... Yeah. <laughs> 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 this is true. This is like before like materials were very differentiated. It was yeah. just like how specular is your object? And that was about it, you know? Exactly. Uh, like, let's change so, the slider. How specular is it? Very And specular. it was just like an artist doing it by eye. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dif- different times. Different times. Captain Price. Favorite mustachioed man in gaming. Maybe. Uh, they're, they're, it's, they're doing cube map reflections on the water again, of course. But it's not too bad because it's concealed by everything else around it yeah by all the stuff on top of the water like the lily pads like if it was just a flat surface like morrowind style uh it would be really obvious and terrible looking but you know with the fog and all the stuff on top of it it's it it gives the illusion of a specular surface and i feel like it's only really obvious when you're doing a lateral movement when you're yeah you're right you're walking forward it's not that distracting yeah you're walking forward it just looks like the the background isn't moving that much yeah Uh, i have to use my claymores (laughs) oh yeah go quick quick before they so they're gonna walk out of here i'm assuming right like this is the way left mouse just in case okay come on out baby i did it right so he should walk out like or am i supposed to like put it in front of the door okay (laughs) that wasn't supposed to be what i was supposed to do but kudos to the game for not saying game over yeah, I know, right? I'm actually surprised it did do that right. Let's actually take a look at the physics objects here. I'm imagining they're going to do it for this. Uh, less so. Well, I do That's appreciate cool. how they have that spotlight Ooh. there in this room. Oh, yeah. Casting on the shadows. You know what's interesting, though, is that the shadows for this spotlight are decidedly lower res than the ones that we saw in front yes. of the... Um, the, uh, in the shipping container. In the shipping container. I want, so they did probably had per shadow, uh, per light control over the shadow maps uh, quality, which pretty cool actually. Another um, hand optimization then. Yeah, yeah. Decide that per light. This is pretty cool. Okay. I mean, the shadow maps are very low res a lot, but they actually don't look that bad. Like the edges are. Where, where's the shadow coming from? Is it coming from this? What's that? The, sh- the shadow just looks... Uh, oh, yeah, so it is a shadow map. It looked almost like baked with how low res it was, but no, it's a shadow map. Uh, I don't know. I kind of... I do like that kind of stuff. I mean, they don't really... I, I think most of the shadow... Uh, pretty much all the shadows are shadow maps in this game, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, there's no baked lighting as far as I know, but it just That's looked baked in that one moment, yeah. Um, let's go forward again with Captain Price. Uh, or Gas. Very interesting name. Ooh, broken. In oh, they're food. trying to simulate the atmospheric like scattering yep. of the moonlight oh, through the particles. It's just like you can see like they put a particle here that's slowly tiling downward. Uh, pretty cool faking of volumetrics. Uh, oh, I like I like it. I like that. Oh yeah. Oh, that's great. I love that. <laughs> that's actually that's pretty nice. Uh yeah, the way it moves around. How about that? 
Cinder block, Cinder uh, block. heavier. Doesn't rake apart like the it's ones cool. in like. And a lot of dust from it. Yeah, it's a little. I think that a lot of the objects they must have considered. Okay, if you're in a firefight in this location, what kind of particles will the thing spawn, and how will it move? Yeah, right. Uh, it's not meant to be played with like this. It's just meant <laughs> to react during combat. Ooh, that that looks hey. uh, weirdly uh, like Ooh. lower hertz level, like for the the movement of the of the actual physics object there. I wonder if it is. But uh, I'm supposed to actually be continuing. Oh, video game toilets. This rich would be proud. Uh, so this isn't quite Duke Nukem level. You can't flush it. Ah, uh, much better. I mean, that was actually a hallmark of PC games for at least a couple decades. The kind of wild interactivity that was not necessary to the plot, ne not necessary to the game advancing. It's just like, you're in this area. What should you be able to do? You should be able to turn off the lights for no reason, you know? At minimum, though, it was always you could flush the toilet. <laughs> yeah, right. I do uh, always kind of like in this game, obviously. Okay, some story here, but uh, one thing I always liked in this game is when you do reload, instead of like him just dropping the magazine and uh, grabbing one from nowhere, he looks like he grabs it from his chest with like a magazine pouch. So that's how it works in the VR game Bone Works. When you oh, reload, yeah? you have to pull out your magazine, physically throw it down, and then you look down at your belt, you have other magazines, and you pull one off your belt, and you stick it in the gun, and then you have to actually sort of like load the weapon from there before you Physical use inventory it. is something that I'm a huge fan of in games. It's why I like uh, the Arma series so much on PC, yep. uh, but they don't have as nearly as complex uh, animations for when you do these things uh, in Arma games. Obviously, there's a budgetary reason for that. Actually, that, that's another fun detail of Boneworks. I'm talking about that because I freaking love that game. I can't yeah, talk yeah. about it. Uh, if you pick up if you pick up a magazine off your belt and there's still a magazine Ooh. in your gun, you can actually use the magazine to sort of flick the other one out. Oh, really? Like you push the object real fast against the other magazine and it knocks it out of your weapon. Oh, you that's like tactical loading in. stuff that you'll see with like in later games in this yeah. series. Actually. They never that's tell awesome. you that you can do this, but it's a physical interaction. You literally just pick it up and you like knock it out of your weapon and stick the new one in. It's really cool. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Uh, that's probably another game we should look at on this channel uh, regarding uh, the this old PC is Arma 2. I'm actually thinking about it now. It's also another period game that would probably run very interesting on this PC. Oh, they have penetration. Yeah, they can. You can shoot through a lot of the walls in this game. That's the like one thing they teach you in the mm, penetration. Thank you, John, for saying penetration. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> that's one of the first things they teach you in this game, that you can do that. Uh, it's used uh, pretty often in multiplayer, actually, I'm, I'm thinking. But in the single player, less so, because, you know, like, I'm actually having a bit hard time here understanding which guy characters I'm shooting versus ones that the AI are actually getting <laughs> up hitting. Did I just shoot my own guy? Uh, I'm not sure. You know. Oh, are they, are they, what is that? They just have, like, a texture mapped onto the scope there. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's also doesn't look like uh, it has the same bit depth of color. No, it looks like a, at least an 8-bit or lower 8-4-bit yeah, like, texture or something. Because, like, the green in there is, like, really weird looking. Actually, you know what? Let's try and do 4 times MSAA. Wait, wait, wait. Should nope, I dare? Nope. nope, don't do it. It'll crash the game, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I was, like, thinking, well, okay, so here's some other fake Ooh. volumetric stuff. Love that. Ooh. Reminds me a bit of the opening mission of, uh, what is it, Splinter Cell? Oh, I was thinking Crisis uh, Warhead. Crisis Warhead. Also, that's a good point, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, Splinter Cell. You're right. Oh, like man. Like in the though, first look opening at, mission. Look at the particles back there on the fire. Oh, man. There's intersections to the right. <laughs> yeah, but they're not as pretty. Like you can see. This is why you Z feather your particles. But obviously, that's a bit too expensive on this GPU for 60 FPS at times. Uh, Confusing that that is the case, but I, I guess that's the way it is. These these weird um, fake volumes. I gotta hand here. it to the artists here, like placing all of those fake volumes like that. That's that must have taken so much time. It looks uh, good. It looks good right here. Yeah. Right. Oh wait, let's not use this gun. Really a uh, nice job from those guys. Yeah. It's not easy. Not these, that I've uh, done it myself. <laughs> <laughs> For, I've placed fake saying. volumetrics before in uh, Source. Oh yeah, that's Let's true. Yeah, uh, where's the I, the darkness here? It's hard to see the bad guys, but actually, I like the uh, the horizon here, where you have the, the trees with that sort of fog at the base of the mountain. Like artistically, it looks good. 
Oh yeah, that does look good actually. Uh, Cause you also get the nice silhouettes of the trees against it. Now one fault, not fault, but you know, obviously they used MSAA here, which doesn't yeah, apply yeah. to, you know, alpha edges like that, right? Yeah, not so, necessarily right. Um, that was a, that made the trees and foliage look extremely aliased, uh, especially on consoles where you're at 600p. Yeah, right. Where it, yeah, that like here it's, it's obviously at 720p. It's still not great, especially like the power lines here. Uh, they're they're pretty intense looking, but oh gosh. So even then, yeah, look at the the, the you can see the overlapping alpha there. Um, I don't know if like so like the, are the bad guys just spawning in until they do something here? No. What? I, I didn't mean to throw a flashbang. Son of a. <laughs> okay, so let's help out our teams. Uh, Okay, shift. Uh, I, yeah, like, I don't need to, but it, it just says it no matter what. Like, like, the funny thing is I'm not even seeing, like, an extreme amount of, uh... Oh, those are... Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, you know, they all look the same. Uh, what can I say? Uh, at this dark level of night lighting. I'm just not paying attention, obviously. Uh, but it did load me up, like, really quickly, by the way, there. That was pretty great. No loading time. I was just back in the game doing what I needed to do. Uh, I do, like, after you uh, unscope out of the rifle, it leaves the depth of field there for a bit. Yeah. You see that? That's actually pretty cool looking. Um, let's kill these guys. It's a nice transition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm assuming I cannot destroy the BMV. Uh Where, where are they even? Like, that's our, that's my friends. Like, you are not a good Call of Duty man. I'm not a good Call of Duty man here. I'm. Oh my, God. like, just getting a sense of where the bad guys are is not too easy. You notice they try to have all the the look of all those spotlights out there. Yeah, are, good are point. All like real with, lights. Uh, the the real lights are underneath yeah. them, definitely. Yeah, yeah that's Which what I mean. Pretty that's intense, a, you know? For a forward render, it's unusual to see, you know, especially for one trying to hit a high frame rate on consoles. Yeah, right. And even far into the distance too. Like I'd imagine they'd call that usually. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like you'd notice like the lights over there anyway. And then obviously the the moonlighting as well. Yep. Uh, that's not bad. Where did my soap McTavish? Uh, so McT, <laughs> McT, good old McT. Um, I yeah, kind of like these, the, the, but all these these wires and the foliage, like that stuff's a nightmare for uh, yeah. image quality. Okay, I do kind of want to try it with four times MSAA at 720p. I'm going to save right. and quit. Okay, save and quit. Does it bring me back to the menu? Thank the gods. And then let's do. You're welcome. Four X. <laughs> yeah, it's like, thank you, John. That didn't also work, by the way. I'm pretty sure the game just crashed. It again. crashed. It crashed again. Changing the options four times MSAA without crashing, please. The answer is no. <laughs> Thank you. Let's resume the game. It should have remembered where I was. Um, but going back to what you were saying earlier, this game obviously is much more streamlined cinematic approach to games that has a more console feel to it uh, in terms of like game design. Uh, but you've been going back and playing older PC games. Yes. And been noticing oh, the, the image quality is so much better with four times MSAA. Wow. Uh, there's just, that looks nice. But we're all the way back here for some reason. Uh, but you've been, you were mentioning like how older PC games um, kind of like focus on just dropping you into a level without a greater description of what you need to be doing always in terms of like prompts uh, and not funneling you. It can be frustrating. I think it's it, it's often more engaging and more interesting when you're sort of the with a lot of like the possibilities are not yet clear. It's not entirely certain what you need to do, but just bumping up against it when it's well designed, like figuring that out is fun. Uh, you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah, I I agree. It's a very different feel than this game. Obviously, this one is more. The, 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 the single player campaign is itself not like overly long if you're going through it at the pace that they want you to be going through it like because everything's very fast and like frantic here um, I mean so you know uh, I guess the, the one of the best examples is still something like Deus Ex 
that first mission. The, oh, that game, you're just like dropped on the, the, the docks, right? And you have almost no sense of, like you just know what you need to do according to your mission objective, but how you do it, what you're doing it, that that's like just such cool classic PC design. Um, let's move forward here. Yeah, you know, and even when it gets simpler than that, like you go back to something like uh, Crusader No Remorse or Terra mm -hmm. Nova or Mech Warrior 2. I mean, when you jump into any of those games, you can just start playing and you fiddle around, you figure out what you can do, what you can't do. You're just kind of like, you know, bumping up against it and learning the ropes and just that, that immediate instant feedback. It's just, okay, here you go. You're playing. Go. Yeah, uh, right. It's very satisfying. Completely different uh, than this. Um, for some reason, I was moving there. Oh, I have to go down the, the rappel. That's rope. that said, uh, one difficult thing on a lot of those old PC games, especially I just played some Messiah recently, which we'll have a let's <laughs> yes. play eventually. Um, like uh, the commands don't often make sense uh, because so modern PC games they're designed around. This is very standardized control. Yeah, they're designed around W A S D. It's like okay, you're gonna you're gonna put your hands there. And the buttons you will need kind of grow out from that point, right? They're all designed yes. to be, be reachable by your left hand. Whereas in a lot of these old PC games, they're like, okay, uh, well, jump starts with a J, so let's put that on J. <laughs> oh, and, and how about how do you get how do you crouch or get out of crouch in Messiah? It's something like you press insert. Yeah, like no one would ever come up. It's also like that was a time when they, they weren't using WSD necessarily. So they were thinking, okay, you're going to be using the arrow keys on your keyboard. Yeah, so that's let's exactly localize what you the do. hand positions there, which is insane to think of because it's so not ergonomic. You know what I mean? Uh, well, a lot of them, the better ones at least, would actually you, they would focus on four, eight, six, and two. So the number pad arrows. That's way better. And then yeah, you would yeah. use all the keys around that for various yeah. functions. But even then, it could get pretty complex. And PC oh, fighting games were the craziest for this, though, in terms of button configs. Because they would always design <laughs> the keyboard to be playable with two people. I mean, you who just played Mortal Kombat recently and Street Fighter 2, uh, like on PC, that must have been really awkward. Did you try out the non-pad controls? Yeah, of course. I mean, it would be stuff like, and I don't remember exactly, but you'd have like J, I, K, and L for movement, and then like Q, W, E, or an ASD for attacks on the one side, and then the other would be like the insert home, page up, page down, and delete block with uh, the numpad movement. Like, I see what they're doing there, but it's, uh, it's a little bit, it's interesting. Uh, I do like that they uh, have real... Uh, obviously, muzzle flashes, no shadows. You know that that's pretty rare for any game. Muzzle flash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but for being four times MSAA here at 720p, it is not running completely poorly. Uh, it actually seems to be running really well at the moment. Just a couple occasional dips below. Can I destroy this class? Ooh, that's uh. I mean, I think it's just a decal at the at the place where I shot it. Dang, I, I probably Oh, didn't. no, wait, wait, let's get away from this thing. I think it's going to explode. I need to go back and play The Darkness again, because I feel like that's a game that might have had muzzle flash shadows, but I can't remember. Oh, I think it totally did, because if I recall, uh, that's like a build-off engine of Chronicles of Riddick, uh, yep. Escape from Butcher Bay, and that game, if I do recall, did have muzzle flash shadows. I'll, I'll flash some footage here and see if it does, but it should, yeah. We'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out. Ooh. Oh, we're going to breach, kind of, I'm a big fan of breaching in games, especially SWAT games, if you've ever played those. Uh, those are th those are real breaches, though, like, there's no control over this here, um, like you would see maybe in later Call of Duty games, which have more control over the breaching. And Rainbow Six was about that, too. Yeah, Rainbow Six, totally. Um, this is famous. Uh, not this exact scene with the night vision, but their initial Call of Duty 4 reveal is where they zoom in from, like, the satellite view over like the streets of what's something that looks like yep. Baghdad and it goes straight into this view of you seeing like all of the yeah the uh, the uh, what do you call it the infrared uh, laser sights of all the people around you I think I also have one too on mine and it just looks really cool when you see it like flashing around so uh, obviously the new Call of Duty games do this completely differently I actually really I kind of preferred the night vision effect from the original Splinter Cell specifically oh. the 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 Xbox version or the version on PC when played on a GeForce 3 card where they had like a subtle depth of field that was really nice 
Oh, I'm, uh, one thing that you can do, I think, recently is you can, um, you can emulate that G GPU okay enough, uh, I think, uh, with some, uh, what is it, like, uh, Voodoo DSG, or what is the name of that thing? Uh, yeah, DG Voodoo or something. DG Voodoo, yeah. D oh, Gas, I just shot Gas, and he's fine, though. Um, <laughs> he's fine somehow. Uh, and you can get a lot of, I think you can get, like, the, whoa, the bloom is going nuts with this, uh, oof. It's kind of cool, though, I guess, you know, like, obviously I shouldn't be looking directly into a bright light with night vision goggles, but here we are. Uh, it's kind of like also, once again, pre-ambient occlusion day, so everything's just yeah. very stark. <laughs> like, like, like this is brutal. <laughs> just like, oh, black box. Uh, yeah, yeah. Fl floating can't do objects. That much about it. I mean, but, yeah, there wasn't much you could do at the time other than, like, you could do like vertex painting or something. I don't know. Oh, you know, I'm I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to. That flashing text on the screen does remind me of the uh, the man shoot game. What is the name of that one? That uh, uh, what what's the name of the game, John? Oh gosh, they made Bullet Storm. Master Sergeant Shooter Person. Yeah, no, I remember that. Yeah, I, I don't remember the name, but that was great. Okay, cool shadows. Cool shadows, definitely cool shadows, but. Uh, Oh man, I keep bringing up this, but that's another thing about um, uh, Boneworks in VR. There's a level where you get a flashlight, and you can both clip it to your body, or you can hold the flashlight, and it always casts shadows, right? Oh, yeah. so it actually casts shadows over your real hands. Oh wow! And because the Oculus controller has like the touch-sensitive buttons, so you can actually kind of twiddle your fingers. So you know, you like hold the light in front of your hand, and you're kind of making like shadow puppets. Shadow puppets. Oh gosh. <laughs> This is all stuff we're going to have to talk about when Half-Life Alex comes out, Sean. I mean, exactly. we're going to have to talk about cool VR immersion. But in terms of immersion, uh, this game, it, it's okay. Uh, obviously, just not my cup of tea, but I can totally respect uh, the amount of effort that goes into doing all these incredibly impressive scripted things, even all these years later. Like, there's a lot of really cool stuff going on here. And the fact that if you are playing this game at the proper pace that's supposed to be played where you're not, stopping all the time like we have it, it has a great feel to it uh, especially if it's your first time playing it but i think that's really all we can say about call of duty 4 yeah modern warfare it ran pretty well on this machine i'm actually a little disappointed that the levels ran so differently i i pretty much didn't expect that um but kind of i guess the nature of the game well it seems like the z feathered alpha had a significant impact on performance impact on fps i guess if i would have known that uh ahead of time like this is running like 1280 by 720 four times msaa now this is running incredibly well um but i guess that's something to know for the future bandwidth limitations on the 8800 gt are pretty big deal uh it's really great at shading but everything else uh, it's not as great but john thanks for talking to me about call of duty 4 modern warfare but of course of course and if you did enjoy this video of john and i talking about this game on this awesome pc please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, then please consider hitting that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to see this video in higher quality, support us on Patreon. As always, please follow us on Twitter, Digital Foundry, John, and myself. And thanks for watching. Uh, yes. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> I have a gravelly voice with a big full accent. I have an eye patch and I wear a nice suit. This means I am leader of bad guy. I hold the nuclear missile bomb. I will never give nuclear missile bomb to you. Give the nuclear missile bomb to us, leader enemy boss, and then put your hands up. Okay. USA is dominate. I am crying. I am crying tears.